Hey, quick content warning. Uh, I cover some dark topics in this about all kinds of different stuff, so just a general dark content warning. If that's not your thing, probably not your video. Thanks. Hey, it's me again. Uh, today we're doing something a little different again. It's going to be on my other channel again, but I basically just finished reading a book, which is something I don't normally do. I don't normally read at all, but I stayed up last night from maybe midnight till about 5 a.m. making sure I finish this book. And I'm pretty much making this video so I can talk about the book without having to bother my family members and friends about it. Because um, this is actually something I don't want to recommend to people, but I do need to get my thoughts out on it so they can leave my brain and then I'm capable of processing it. So this all started with a Wendigoon video covering the novel of No Longer Human and the manga adaptation by Junji Ito of No Longer Human. And I started watching the video and he gave graphic warnings about the content and started talking about it. And I thought, you know what, I just want to read it and find out for myself rather than keep going with the video explanation. And so I did finally pick it up. I put off the video watching it and I decided to pick up the book itself. I got it yesterday and like I said, finished it uh, overnight trying to uh, finish it and I did. And essentially I just need to get my thoughts out about it so I can move on because I don't want to bother the people around me with it because I don't want anybody else to read it, to be honest. Uh, the best way I can put it is uh, 10 out of 10, don't read it. Just don't. Don't do it. I honestly was a lot more unfazed by it than I was anticipating. I thought it was going to bother me a lot more, and maybe it will. I don't think it's something I'm going to really stop thinking about. Um, liter 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 literally? That's not a real word. I'm making up words now. I don't think it's something I'm going to stop thinking about in a liter literary sense. There we go. That makes kind of more sense. But I do need to stop thinking about it uh, as far as everything I want to talk about. So let's get into that. So this novel, graphic novel, the, this story here is unique in that it sort of blends uh, reality and fiction a bit. It sort of covers, because, because it's an adaptation of the original novel, it sort of takes liberties in blending the story that the original author wrote with the original author after he wrote that story. And the original story was actually already a blend of the original author and stuff he made up. It's sort of, it's very interesting. So the original novel was about a man's life um, in a bunch of notes. And the author had found them, supposedly, and uh, just put them into a book. And it's a series of just fucked up and unfortunate things that happen kind of back to back to back throughout a man's life. And just his downward spiral and his inability to understand humans or feeling or anything like that. He just doesn't understand uh, humans. He doesn't understand what it means to be human. And come to find out, the story is actually a lot closer to the author's real life than it, it isn't. Um, the author went through a lot of the same issues, maybe not verbatim, but you can tell it was definitely very closely linked to the author. And when things in the story would happen, like uh, the main character trying to kill themselves by doing a double or just trying to kill themselves multiple times, um, this actually ended up culminating in the author's final action, which was publishing this book. And then a few weeks later, um, actually end up, did end up completing a double with his lover. And that was it. And what's interesting about this adaptation is that's actually how the opening pages that's what they are. The opening pages is the Junji Ito's depiction of the original author's death scene, which is totally grim and totally fucked up. And then he also takes his own liberties and sort of expanding on the story and how he, how it makes sense to him. So like I said, the uh, main character is someone who doesn't understand human emotion. That's why it's called No Longer Human. And their progression from childhood to their eventual end of their life. And the main character's name is Yozo. So Yozo grows up, just doesn't understand, uh, like, wanting, doesn't understand the point of doing anything, and just doesn't get people. He doesn't understand why he needs to eat or anything like that, and sort of fakes his way through life just by putting on uh, a facade, does this thing he calls clowning, which is just basically laughing everything off and making a joke out of himself so that people don't take him seriously so he can be left alone because all he wants is to be left alone. And this carries him far enough but he is always noticed by people around him for either being excellent in school or just being attractive or whatever it is. 
and sort of can't get attention away from him, which is like the last thing he wants when he's trying to get off. He doesn't want that attention, but he just keeps drawing it in, because it, it drives him crazy, because he just wants to be left alone. He doesn't understand anything about interacting with other people or things like that. He just doesn't want anything to do with it, because it doesn't make sense to him. Eventually, at some point, uh, a kid in school who he thought was unremarkable and un unimportant um, saw through him that he was faking it after he tried to jump for something and then miss, and he's like, you did that on purpose, and he just froze and shattered, and it basically spirals from there into these insane events that just keep going and going and going. Um, he ends up trying to befriend that kid that sees through him because he doesn't want that kid to tell everybody else that he's putting up a facade, and he makes that kid think that his cousin sister who he lives with likes him and then when he confronts her and and she's disgusted by him because he's not very great looking um he ends up killing himself so he caused this dude to just off himself and that's sort of where the downward spiral goes because from here he gets involved with multiple things like uh once he gets into like high school or college he starts um drinking a lot he starts going to prostitutes regularly and that's like a brief relief he can find in life is like that i guess uh rush the dopamine hit i don't know what it is um this is a brief uh away from life a little bit of comfort eventually it gets involved in uh communist movements which is funny uh definitely dates what was going on back then and he ends up with so many different women uh pulling them in in different ways and pretty much getting them fully involved in his life before leaving multiple times. So he'll be with one girl, then leave, then another girl, then leave. And then he'll just kind of do it in the most fucked up way. Like with the communist place, like he gets with the girl who's like kind of running it. And when they go to protest, he chickens out pretty much during the middle of it, doesn't fight, and actually kicks her away, things like that. And then has to run into her again multiple times. Um, he causes the death of multiple women in his life. Um, pretty much sees them as just objects, a totally distorted reality uh, or view on uh, humans, especially women. And it sort of goes and goes. He just he cycles through a lot of different women and just brings more and more deaths with him. I've mentioned the double suicide. He finds one woman who he feels suffers in the exact same way he does, and they both agree that they want to die, so they plan to do this double suicide. And in Junji Ito's manga, they try to overdose and then drown themselves. Originally, I think they just tried to drown themselves. Um, and she dies, and he survives, and still can't kill himself. And he's haunted by all these different ghosts and imageries uh, of like these haunting figures throughout. And it's, it's very unsettling to look at. There are some shots where like you turn the page, and it, you see like certain depictions, and you're just sort of like uncomfortably shook it's it's difficult to describe but uh the author's very good at that Junjito, the mangaka eventually he he bounces around like constantly goes on plenty of binges benders and just gets pretty fucked up this novel's pretty graphic as well there's like plenty of depiction of him pretty much being uh forced into acts as a child and he's just sort of unfazed by him because he doesn't understand why someone would want to do that so it doesn't really bother him and he never said anything about it like the different servants in the estate he lived at because he was in a wealthy family uh the people the man servants there would pretty much just take advantage of him because he's a child and he wouldn't do anything about it because he doesn't get it and so that definitely led to how things would go later Eventually, he does end up briefly with a girl and her daughter, and when he realizes that he's just bringing them more trouble than anything because he's constantly drinking, he's selling their clothes, pawning them off so he can go buy more drinks because he doesn't have any money, things like that, uh, he eventually leaves because he realizes he's just going to ruin what they have. And then he finds, I think that's when he finds the girl at the bar, crashes there for a bit, sleeps with her a ton, and then eventually gets with the girl across from the bar who runs like a... Uh, uh, just like a regular shop I think and they get married and go and it ends up much much worse and it just feels like every time something good happens it just gets ruined or someone dies literally and when he gets married with the one girl he starts uh, he goes on benders again uh, and then in the middle of one of his benders he started coughing up blood so he goes to get medicine and then he likes the girl there and then the girl there eventually gives him uh, in this story, it's opium. In the original, I think it was morphine, but that's because he meets the author later and they have different things. Basically, he gets super addicted to opium. Um, his wife starts going crazy because she caught him like sleeping 
with the medicine lady, which she, there was an earlier point in the story where his wife was forced into an act by another person that they knew, and he didn't do anything but just watch because he thought that's just how it works, like that's just how animals act. It was really, really messed up. And so he sleeps around with this girl and gets, but it's pretty much just for the opium that he keeps stealing and gets super hooked on that, super, super addicted to it. And eventually it culminates to where his wife ends up going insane and killing herself. She was going to kill him and her, but she was left alone um, because he never came home and she ended up just dead by herself. And then he goes back with the medicine girl and, you know, tries to make that work. And then they burn all of the herbs that the medicine girl had because that's what his wife used to kill herself. And the house catches fire and the girl runs in to go save her dad. And they both burn to death and they're just charred corpses. And just another thing to haunt him. And also throughout the entire story, every mistake he makes haunts him. Like the kid, he got to kill himself in the very beginning. Uh, he's constantly seeing him. Also totally glossed over this the sister he cousin he was living with there was two of them an older one and a younger one he slept with both of them they both had kids they got jealous of each other and the younger one stabbed the older one to death and they have their baby and their baby perfectly resembles the kid who killed himself and called him out for faking stuff so that imagery constantly pops up over and over again it's like right when you think you can relax or that things are okay it comes back again it's like oh don't forget like this shit sucks and you're seeing monsters everywhere rewind a lot he tried to kill himself a second time before he started cheating on his wife and when he did he overdosed tried to overdose again um and he basically went through these different not trials but admissions on his descent to hell because he thought he was dying he was descending to hell and he talked about having these 10 different curses basically he was born with and he spit them up one at a time and they were the most foul disgusting like thing that had been haunting him just all in a row but yeah back to the rehab so he's in rehab he's losing his mind he's going crazy crazy hallucinations everywhere and he sees another man running around uh begging for morphine saying he's a goldfish uh he's just clearly loony and he finally sees his face and it's his own face it looks identical to himself and so then you have this moment where you're like, are we watching our main character see himself and he's totally out of body now? Or what's happening? Once he gets off of the uh, withdrawal symptoms, you, we find out it is actually the original author of the original novel. And he's in there because he has the same issues, but he's addicted to morphine. And he says he's going to be a writer one day and he's wrote different stuff. And it sort of comes off with this weird, like, it's really a weird meta plot point but i think it works out pretty well with the way it ends and the way it handles it by the end so they talk to each other to share their stories and they pretty much agree that they have the same deal going on and he says he's going to write the author of the original one osamu dazai says he's going to write a book on yozo and yozo's like that's freaking epic and yozo sees outside the window uh this little kid that resembles the kid who made kill himself in the beginning and then across from the yard you can you can see the women's section and you see a woman looking through the bar straight at both of them and they're like i wonder who she's looking at the kid walks to the lady and comes back and points at yozo and goes daddy which is to imply that that is his kid and that is the girl his sister cousin who he had the kid with who killed the older sister probably sounds super confusing i'm not really trying to do my best analysis of it i'm just trying to get these thoughts vomited out so i can move on with my life and not feel awful so then he gets out of the psych ward his brother gets him out who runs the family estate because their father died and says hey you can live like a life fully paid i just want you to move the fuck out of the city and go live in the countryside um, and just don't interact with any women, any drugs, any alcohol, and I will pay for your, your entire life. So he agrees, but he says, I need two more people to come with me, and that's his sister, cousin, and their kid. So they take all of them, send them out to the farm, and then it cuts to 12 years later, where the author, uh, Dazai, comes, he cut to him, and he's like, we're going to visit a friend. Like, he pretty much helped change the way I see life and the way I write and everything, and I want to show him the first chapter of his story that I wrote. So they drive all the way out there, they get there, He's pretty much a disheveled, he's pretty much just a corpse at that point, fully gray hair. I think he's only, not even 30 yet, but he's fully gray hair. It looks like he's pretty much dead. And then his sister cousin comes in, like, who the fuck is that lady out there? And she starts freaking out. So then they are like, you got to leave, dude. And he's like, oh. And then there's a lot of fucking in this. They start fucking, which is weird. 
and then the author leaves he's super distressed because he didn't really get to talk to Yozo and then cut to Yozo on the beach in a wheelchair saying he feels nothing but actually let me get the exact quote now I have neither happiness nor unhappiness everything passes as his the mother of his child is walking around the beach and the child is running around flying a kite and on that kite is a newspaper saying Osamu Dazai doubles died drowning in the Tomagawa River with a war widow note reads I can no longer write so this was a real thing that actually happened the author did do this and Junji Ito recontextualizes it in this weird fiction world that this is something that happened because of Yozo pretty much just disconnecting from the world and just being there instead of like what he used to be which is again the scene depicted in the very first few pages so very morbid very fucked up and yeah that's kind that's kind of it it i read it straight i didn't take any breaks and like i said it was from like midnight to like almost five in the morning and i didn't even feel tired until i was like done reading i'm like okay I just passed out, but I didn't even feel like I was forcing myself to read it or anything. I got to a point where I was halfway through the book, because it's like 600 pages, but obviously it's a visual novel. But I got to about halfway through the book, and I was like, oh, I'll probably just read the rest in the morning, get a little bit of sleep. And then it started getting really interesting, and then I couldn't put it down by then, because I was already so close, so I was like, I might as well finish it. So, overall, 10 out of 10. I don't recommend anybody read it. And if you watch this, I'm sorry if any of that was comprehensible and you were able to experience any of that. Probably not, because I'm not really trying to make it super comprehensible. It's sort of just a shit post for myself. But yeah, very dark, dark story. That was mostly why I picked it up, because I heard it's one of the darkest stories ever. Uh, especially with all the context about the real-life events, it makes it so much worse. And I thought I would be a lot more bothered by it. And may, Like I said, maybe I will be, and I don't think I'm going to stop thinking about it. But yeah. That's pretty much it. Uh, everything sucks. I want to I wanna go away. I got some uh, discounted Lovecraft stories and other related stuff in here. So I'm probably going to start reading that and see if I feel even worse. Hopefully I do. And yeah, so those are my thoughts about uh, No Longer Human. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I want to... That's it. <laughs> not literally. I'm going to censor that. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to go away so I can think about anything else and be done that's pretty much it thanks for listening or whatever i don't know don't read it it's a 10 out of 10 don't read it unless you want to hate yourself and hate living that's it bye